meaning you're respectful to other people and used appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Pardon? Conflict of interest declarations. Uh, I have not made been, been made of any. Uh, are there any councillors wishing to put any forward at this point? No, Mr. Zaknich. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This advice to the council meeting relates to disclosure of political donations and the requirements of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. The Act under Section 10.4 requires a person submitting planning applications or submissions regarding a planning application to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of council. Reportable political donations include those of or above $1,000. The disclosure statement forms are available on council's website or from the customer service centre and must be lodged in accordance with the Act. In dealing with development applications, councillors need to take into account specific planning matters contained in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Accordingly, the provisions of section 4.151 of that Act are set out in the council officer's report detailing planning issues to be considered. The Local Government Act 1993 section 375A requires that a division be called whenever a motion for a planning decision is put at a meeting of the council. <clears throat> planning decision means a decision made in the exercise of a function of council under the Environmental Planning Assessment Act, including a decision relating to a development application, an environmental planning instrument, a development control plan, or a development contribution plan under that act, but not including the making of an order under Division 9.3 of Part 9 of that Act. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Zaknich. Apologies, thanks, councillors. Councillor Touchbury. Good evening, Mr Mayor. I would like to move that Council receives notes and accepts the apologies of Councillors Cameron and Con and grant leave of absence for the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Sust, were you happy to, happy to speak to that or not? Oh, just to say that I was looking around and I couldn't see Councillor King until I looked at the <laughs> screen and there he is, as large as life. So, yes, no, I have nothing further to add, Thank Mr Mayor. Thank you. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Thank you, including Councillor King. Voting for. Merrill Minute. There is no Merrill Minute. Uh, action Plan, CM6. Thank you, Councillors. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the following action plans be received and noted. One, actions complete for noting only. Two, actions awaiting response from external parties. Three, actions in progress. And four, long term issues more than three months. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury. Second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to that at all? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Just one question in relation to one of the items in the action list. Um, a few problems with this document. Uh, in relation to the long-term actions, the long-term issues, I noted that there is mention of the mobile CCTV camera pilot. Just wondering who determined that that would occur in 2022? Says it's to be at May 2022 from memory. I'm just trying to bring it up. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor, through you. I'm just looking for the item, but my recollection was the resolution was that it, that we proceed with that pilot in 2122 <coughs> and do the preparatory work between now and then. Okay, it says the report on the efficacy of the pilot will be presented to Council in oh, May 2022. Sorry, thank you, Mr Mayor. That's post the trial. So once we've actually undertaken the trial, then we'll do a follow-up report to the Council. So it's going to take 12 months to do a report? No, no, no we're going to undertake the trial of the mobile CCTV cameras ah. and then once we've collected all the data and information, okay. yeah. we'll then prepare a report to Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor Stutchby, question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a question for you which may precede a question. Am I allowed to ask a question about something that used to be on the, um, on the action plans but has been taken off the action plans? Or yes. should I ask that in questions without notice later on? 
No, you can ask it now. It's relevant to the action plan item. So we used to have an action plan to um, dispose of or to manage uh, compost um, at the wastewater treatment plant, but because of PFAS, uh, that uh, plan was um, um, stopped. Um, and so my question is in two parts. Firstly, where are we at with our own compost and um, how long before we can expect a response from the relevant authorities on how PFAS affects compost, please. Thank you. Mr. Ferris. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, so currently we're working on a further brief for a consultant to scope out where we can use um, our current um, biosolids. We're um, testing them on a regular basis, we're getting um, some spikes in PFAS through that process. So we, at the moment we're collecting enough information so that when we um, pass it out for a specialist to review, if we can actually use it for composting, which we're hoping we can. Um, at this stage, it's doubtful we can do land application as, as we'd previously uh, attempted to do, but We'll wait, and once we've got that, that'll give us a chance then to go back to the market uh, with that background information so that when we engage again a suitable contractor, they have um, the full information to make a, a detailed submission to us about the future of it. <clears throat> yes. Mr Mayor, is there some way we could keep this matter um, at the forefront of our attention? Um, if it's not in action plans, then where can it be? Because I think this is a significant issue and um, I don't want it to drop off the radar, so to speak. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. CEO. Certainly we can add it to the action plan as an ongoing uh, matter to report on. The other opportunity with, uh, with the testing we're undertaking is to then engage with the EPA in terms of their guidelines and how they might be, um, you know, better enhanced in terms of application of this material to, um, you know, a broad acre uh, application, which is currently controlled by a series of guidelines that need further work. Thank you, Mr. Zakvich. Thank you, Councillor Stout. Be happy to move that item now. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Okay. Confirmation Minister previous meeting held on the 14th of December. Thank you, Councillors. Councillor Doxey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to move the following recommendation that the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, 14 December 2020 at 6.42 p.m. be confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Glacken. Happy to second. Thank you. Councillor Dox, do you wish to speak to that at all? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. No question or debate. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? The motion is carried. Thank you. We have no reports from community forums. No notices of motion or rescission. Uh, we have no presentation of deputations, no reports, minutes of committees and working parties. 12.1, documents for sealing. Thank you, Councillor Vanderman. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. I'll uh, move the recommendation and motion that the Council authorises the seal to be affixed to the documents outlined below in the presence of two signatories authorised to affix the seal pursuant to Regulation 400 of the Local Government General Regulation 2005 and the Council Seal and Management of Legal Documents and Advice Procedure. A, Albury City surrender of lease with LJ and BA Sears, previously lot 29 Albury Airport. B, Albury City lease to LJ and BA Sears, lot 42 Albury Airport, commencing 1 July 2020 to 30 June 2035. This is a replacement lease for the above surrender due to the change of lot titles, file 09 slash 01739. C, Albury City lease to Thaguna Football Club, commencing 30 September 2020 for 10 years, file 10 slash 00359. D, Albury City Crown Lands, licensed to Ivor Park Tennis Club Incorporated, commencing 1 January 2021 for five years, file 09 slash 277674. And E, Albury City Deed of Lease to Phoebe Curtis and Christopher Klein of 89 Maryvale Way Road Reserve, commencing 16 October 2020, for five years, file 10 slash 00641, and I need a drink. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thurley. 
We'll second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Vanderman, do you wish to speak to that at all? Uh, definitely not. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Office of Reports for Consideration Development Application 13.1.10.2020.37967.1 Respite Daycare Centre at 53 Hoffman Road, Thaguna. Councillor Blackman. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to move the recommendation as a motion that Council A receives the contents of this report and B grants consent to development application 10.2020.37967.1 for the respite daycare centre, including a colour bond shed, basketball half court, car park signage, and vegetation removal on land situated at 53 Hoffman Road, Laguna, described as lot 101 on DP. Uh, 1077851, seven, subject to the conditions contained in the draft determination uh, included as attachment seven to this report. Thank you. Councillor Doxey. Happy to seek it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to that? Uh, yes, uh, very briefly, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we were very fortunate at the end of last year to have a uh, couple of other uh, developments come forward uh, on a similar, in a similar vein uh, that helped to support our community uh, on a very broad uh, in a very broad way uh, and to help uh, members, specific members of our community. And this, again, is another uh, very good uh, development uh, that is greatly needed uh, by members of our community. And it's fantastic uh, that we're able to um, uh, support uh, such a development within our community. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Glucken. Question from Councillor Vanderman. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just on uh, page 41, an electronic copy under the figure four subject land and adjoining vegetation, it's got the assessment report found that the site supports largely exotic vegetation dominated by introduced grasses and forbs. And I wanted to know what <laughs> forbs were. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Christie, can you answer that interesting question? Oh. Thank you for the question. Councillors, and I can see where you are. Sorry, I've got a printed copy because mine's not working. So, top of the page for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, Forbes, I would have to take the precise botanical definition on, but they are not a, a grass, but they are a ground cover or a plant. But I would have to take a precise, if you want a more precise definition. Yeah. I've never heard of the word before. So, that's all right. Hey? Yeah, okay. That'd be good. I just didn't have a chance to look it up. I just thought it might have been a spelling mistake. It could have been shrubs or something like that. So anyway, that's all right. Yeah, excellent. There's been no further question or debate. I'm happy to put that motion as a, as a, um, yeah, hold your hands up. Councillor Stutchbury, Councillor Doxy, Councillor Mack, Councillor Glacken, Councillor Thurley, Councillor Vanderman, Councillor King. The motion is carried as a division. That's the word. Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, CM 13.2, public exhibition of the draft Orbe Citywide Div Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Study. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that uh, Council A receives the contents of this report, endorses the draft Orbe Citywide Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Study. C, resolves to publicly exhibit the draft Orbe Citywide Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Study for a minimum period of 28 days. D, undertakes public exhibition in accordance with that outlined in this report. And E, if no objection, submissions are received during public exhibition that the draft or be citywide Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Study be adopted. Thank you. Councillor Doxey. Uh, very happy to second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to that? Uh, yes. Um, for too long now, we've had a fairly piecemeal approach to uh, issues with Aboriginal cultural heritage and often it, it um, every, every, every DA it comes up and it's handled on a case by case basis. This gives us a good framework for the future and everyone if this gets adopted will know what we're facing, will know what they have to do and I think this is a great piece of work. The consultants have done a great job. I'm really, I know they've already consulted with the local community, Aboriginal community, uh, and it'll be interesting to see if there are any further submissions from them, but I commend this uh, very much to Council. Thank you, Council Thurley. There being no further questions or debate, 
Happy to put that motion as a division. All those in favour? Councillor Tushby, Councillor Doxy, Councillor Mack, Councillor Glatton, Councillor Thurley, Councillor King. Those against? Sorry. Oh, well, and Councillor Vanderman. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Yeah, I said it was four. Okay, thank you very much. 13.3, uh, the Albury Swim Centre Pool Filter Replacement. Councillor Stutchbury. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wish to uh, move that Council accepts the tender from WJ Pratt for contract number 204-03060 for the design and construction of the Albury Swim Centre Pool Filter Replacement for lump sum amount of... $440,605, including GST. Thank you. Councillor Glocken. I'm oh, happy to second. Thank you. Councillor Stutch, do we do wish to speak to that at all? Yes, I do, just briefly. Um, first to say that um, this is a fairly routine matter and there was no local tenderer, so there's no controversy and we can move along with the qualitative and quantitative assessments of the staff. Um, I guess I'm just a bit worried that, um, you know, with the new Murray River um, experience and talk of, you know, the pool being demolished, that maybe we're... No, I, I, I don't think I need to mention that. I think we should just vote on this motion. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. I think you're preempting something that's going to happen in 40 years' time. Uh, okay, all those in favour of the motion? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, CM 13.4, the public CCTV biannual report 2018 to 2020. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you to move the recommendation as a motion uh, that Council receives and notes the public CCTV system biannual report 2018 to 20 and um, just moving at the moment A and B uh, and B undertakes a review of the CCTV Code of Practice and Standard Operating Procedure, incorporating the expansion of the public CCTV system and delineating between the public uh, CCTV system and the Albury City's internal CCT systems by developing independent governance and reporting objectives and protocols for the public CCTV systems. Um, at the moment, I don't wish to move C, um, but I would like to raise C uh, in my opening debate and then uh, see if other councillors are interested uh, in adding uh, C uh, to the motion. But I'm happy to move at the moment the original motion as in the report. Okay. Second that, Councillor Doxy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move, uh, I second the motion and I'm happy to hear the argument. Thank you. I don't understand what's happening. Um, we're either moving the motion as it is presented or we're moving it amended. At this stage, we appear to be moving it not as original but not amended. So it is an the, explanation. It is the original motion at the moment, but if anyone wishes to propose an amendment based on C after the debate or will shadow an amendment, then... Foreshadow amendment, that would be fine at this point. This is the way I understand Councillor Glacken's approach. Is that right, Councillor Glacken? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, if I could address that uh, question in, in my uh, opening comments. Okay, um, thank you. I am very happy to move the, re um, the recommendation as a motion, but I am very keen to add uh, C if other councillors uh, are happy for us to add C. C is, in essence, to ask that our staff undertake um, negotiations with the police with a view to obtaining further information so that we can more accurately uh, assess um, the uh, outcome of having the CCTV um, provision within our community. It's very important for us to be able to gather data to show the benefit to our community uh, because we are at the moment um, wanting to undertake further work out in Lavington. Uh, we're wanting to look at the, um, the proposal, or well, we have agreed that we will be undertaking mobile CCTV investigations as well. So it's very important, I believe, uh, and I'm hoping that my fellow councillors <coughs> here this evening uh, will agree, that it is extremely important for us to have data 
based on the information gathered by the police and how uh, successful the CCTV program is within our community. Um, not only uh, in the city, uh, the Albury CBD area, but also the new um, development that we're going to put out uh, in Lavington and particularly um, the mobile uh, investigation that we're undertaking. So if councillors are happy, I would really like to add uh, a third, um, a, a line C, um, and Terence has that information at the moment. Um, so can I ask Mr Mayor through you, um, are you happy if we uh, show C again and then ask Councillor Doxy if he's happy to take that uh, being the seconder? Um, unless, of course, there are councillors wishing to speak against it. So if we could show uh, the yeah. wording of C, please, Mr Mayor. Terence, right. if you could put C back up there, thanks. There it is. Councillor Doxy, can you uh, give a response to Councillor Glackman's request? Mr Mayor, I order. Yes, Councillor Thurley. We have a motion A and B, um, moved by Councillor Glackham. So my understanding is either someone needs to move, foreshadow an amendment, and it's pretty hard to see that the mover of this motion can also foreshadow an amendment. So at this stage, we need to vote on A and B, um, unless someone else in this council chamber says I foreshadow I want to move an amendment right now to add item C. Yes, and I'm I... just concerned that Councillor Glacken is moving the motion and then wants to add a bit to it. My understanding... Yes, Councillor Glacken. Thank you. My understanding, Mr Mayor, is that I can uh, change my motion, ask that my motion be changed, um, and uh, as long as the seconder is happy to accept that, is my understanding. Well, it's quite unusual and essentially I, I understand the objective you're trying to achieve and um, at this point I'm probably I'm happy to give indulge that proposition if Councillor Doxy is happy to include this as part of the original motion. Councillor Doxy? Yeah, I'm happy to move this. Yes, Councillor Stutchbury. Um, when this motion came up on the screen, it showed A, B and C, yep. but my document says A and B. Yep. So therefore, Councillor Glacken is moving an amended motion and I think that that's how she should be presenting it, as an amended motion. Simple. Why, why are we overcomplicating it with this ludicrous here and there, which both Councillor Thurley and myself have now raised points of order over? Councillor Glacken has moved an amended motion, so why not just call it that? Well, what I'll do is I think we should debate the efficacy of point C as an amended motion for this point, Councillor Black. And if, we, if you can open the debate, you've already discussed point C, but I'm happy to put that in as a, a foreshadow amendment or you wish to amend the motion to points include point C. So, Terence, if you can include point C as part of that amendment, um, that would be great. Uh, and we can... We've heard, we've heard Councillor Glacken speak to that motion or the amendment. I'm happy to take any other debate on that amendment as to for or against for point C. Any other discussion, Councillor Stutchbury? Councillor Vanderman. Um, Question? Yeah. Um, item C, is, it's a, a little confusing for me. I'm, I'm not really sure what uh, Councillor Glacken wants to try and achieve uh, with that, um, the way I read it, um, it's it's getting more um, uh, detailed data about um, how they're using, uh, how the police are using the CCTV, so we can make better judgments on its efficacy. Uh, and if that's if that's the case, um, I don't have an issue with it. Although I think we might struggle. Uh, getting the police to to actually do that. So, whilst um, I, I'm happy to, um, to to have it included, um, I, I'm not sure that we're we're going to achieve much by by putting it in. But I understand now what the mm. the idea of it is. So. Thanks, Councillor Vanner. Well, in that, in essence, I can answer that question. The report uh, does have a lot of uh, termed anecdotal references. 
from the police about what they believe without any substance or any reporting structure attached to it. So there's no, I think it's all risk and reward for us. We're taking all the risk and the police are not putting any investment in this product and in fact, effectively not in providing us with any justification except anecdotal evidence. And I think, again, I think that's really the, what this recommendation or this motion is, or this amendment is trying to achieve that we negotiate with them to see if we can get some more public oriented information about crime and street crime to justify our decision making. So that's really the, the gist of it as best as I understand this point, which is what you, would you glean from that discussion? Okay. All right. My, my button's still on, so yep. I'm trying to press the four button. So no worries. I'm happy she has, if you wish, if you speak for. So I'm, I'm happy to speak for, uh, for the motion. Uh, Sorry, did you want to speak against that? So I'm happy to I'm speak for amendment. I'm happy to speak for the motion, although I I, I must I must say that uh, in my experience, uh, having tried to deal with the CCTV stuff now for probably eight or, or ten years, in terms of um, you know getting it into the uh, into Albury City and now uh, Lavington, uh, it's been an ongoing. Uh, saga for us but in terms of our community feeling safer I think it's achieved its result I think for operational reasons the P police do not want to uh, provide more granular information to councils like us because they I don't think they do anywhere in Australia in any jurisdiction provide that level of detail in terms of um, you know, coming back to the people who have got the CCTV uh, coverage. I mean, it, you only have to listen to the language when they're talking. Uh, they do not. They just don't, will will not provide that level of detail uh, uh, in terms of maybe statistics that they want, we want uh, to justify a decision. My justification for this decision is that I believe in 95% in of cases... Uh, CCTV camera uh, does eventually provide for a safer community, a safer environment for our people to live and work and play in. Um, so fr from the perspective of trying to justify CCTV cameras, I am of the opinion that the CCTV cameras work. It is problematical whether you're going to achieve anything with item C, but I don't have an issue. Uh, if that's an aspirational thing for us to try and achieve, I don't have an issue in it being there. As if somebody successfully moves that we delete that, I wouldn't have an issue either that being deleted. I will forever uh, support CCTV cameras in our city, in our CBDs, uh, in areas that are... Um, uh, clearly problem areas or black spot areas or whatever the case may be, I will always support that CCTV uh, camera usage uh, because I believe at the end of the day it makes our community uh, safer and makes them feel safe, which is half the half the issue. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Vanderman. Speaking against, Councillor Thurley speaking against the amendment, which is point No, C. I'm speaking against this motion. Well, um, we're still dealing with the amendment. I've decided to put the, the amendment up as C, Councillor Thurley, uh, after your okay. point of order. So we're dealing with the amendment solely at this point. So item C. Yep. Righto. Um, we've had the police address this council on several occasions and basically the crime statistics are not... Um, they cover the Albury Police District. They cannot say that there were this many... Um, shop, break and enter in this area and this many break and enter somewhere else. It's across the whole police district. So we have this um, large scale um, reporting of crime statistics across this area. What, and I'm totally with Councillor um, um, Vanderven and probably all other councillors in saying that the installation of these cameras has done a lot, especially in the apprehension of offenders. 
I'm not sure that it does a whole lot to deter offenders. After all, it's an alcohol fueled, fueled event. I don't see too many drunks going, oh, I wonder whether I should do this or I might get caught. They do it. But, but when you look at C, it says, ensures the aforementioned incorporates the requirement for New South Wales Police. We cannot dictate to New South Wales Police that you must provide us this. We can ask, but we cannot uh, have a requirement in there. And they've already told us that, that at the moment, that's not how they report crime. We should continue the discussions, our council staff, Ms. Code and others, should continue the discussions with Albury Police to see if we can refine the data and get better data. That will enable us to make better decisions on the location of future CCTV. But what we've got is working well. What we've got has detected crime and, and managed to, to allow the police to apprehend offenders. But we cannot dictate to the police that you must do this. So uh, I'm, a, I'm opposing the amended and I would support the initial motion A and B. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor King, is that a question or is that speaking against? Speaking against. I'll just take someone speaking for the, the amendment. Councillor Doxy. Sorry, yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've heard the arguments both sides through uh, Councillor Thurley and Councillor Van Der Ven. Uh, I sat here and I listened to the police commander and his crime manager. They are always going to be careful about what information they provide. At the end of the day, this is not a direction to police. It's ours. And if we can get any further information from police, that's fine. I think we just move with the amendment and get on with business. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doxy. Councillor King, you speak against the amendment. Yeah, speak against. Look, I think the item C is somewhat naive. Um, the uh, CCTV is um, part of a tool in uh, detecting offenders. Um, there's confessions, there's statements, there's eyewitness, eyewitness accounts, CCTV, uh, and a lot of other things. I, I think to actually uh, try and badger the police to give us a breakdown of um, every single event is only going to tie them up. And it's also going to tie, tie our staff up in then reporting to us. And we're going to sit there and nod. We're going to go, oh, that's great, for 30 seconds, create hours and hours and hours of work. Um, the CCTV is working. It's out there providing... The, uh, the feed back to the police. Police are making arrests, they're using it like they use all their other tools. And I think the bog, bog them down with extra work um, is uh, not the greatest idea I've heard tonight. Thank you, Councillor King. Uh, no, no more speakers for, but Councillor Blacken to sum up. Councillor Stutt, you wish to speak against. Well, I'll just be very brief and echo Councillor King and Councillor Thurley. Uh, we don't want to bog the police down in unnecessary reporting. The fact that the cameras are there in public view and there are signposts posts up, that means that they are doing what they are meant to do, which is to deter crime by being visible. And for the police to give us a granular report of every little pensioner who trips over their poodle on the street is of no consequence to us. I think that... Uh, the original motion is fine and this amendment is unnecessary and um, wasteful of police and council time. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, no more speakers for or against. I'd just like to value add to this discussion and speak for the amendment. On the basis that in this very chamber a few years ago, we were discussing a DA in relation to a very well-known hot dog stand. And during that discussion and the debate, the police provided detailed, detailed information about crimes that were reported within the precinct of that particular DA, which was in Dean Street. Now, it is my view, and my view is only my view, that if we're going to spend millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of ratepayers' money, and the police and the government are not providing any money to this project, 
the littlest they could do is provide us with granular information to support our decision making. And I believe they did that in other instances, which some of us were present for. And we remember the pink dots on the screen colouring in an intersection where there were a lot of street crime and it was to justify their opposition to the DA that did get up, by the way. So I don't think it's any greater, greater detail that we should expect from our police to provide us with that information to inform our decision-making. When we're making decision-making, our decisions incorporate hundreds of thousands of dollars at the expense of our rate pays to expect the police to provide granular quantitative data to justify the decision making is not an overreach. So I would be supporting the amendment. Councillor Glaken, do you wish to sum up on the amendment? Thanks. I do indeed and clarify a couple of matters. Uh, firstly, the reason I didn't want to include C originally and wanted to open debate and discuss the matter. Um, with a view to then adding C, was because I had not had the opportunity to talk to other councillors about uh, adding C uh, prior to this evening. Uh, and I agree that the wording is probably, um, in fact, I, I believe that the wording is, is not the best, and I do apologise for that. Um, in essence, I'm really asking in C uh, that we request of our staff that they work with the New South Wales Police to make, to better um, make available data that we as a council can use uh, when making these decisions about CCTV. And I want to make it very, very clear, crystal clear, that I absolutely support the provision of and the provision and the use of CCTV in our community by Albury City Council. I am not saying in any way, shape or form here this evening that I don't support it. It has been successful, but we largely rate that success on somewhat anecdotal evidence. And I believe that we should, for future um, purposes of augmentation, uh, enhancement and replacement of facilities or the equipment in the longer term, um, the, lo the location of those uh, mobile CCTV cameras and the use of and perhaps even the enhancement of. So it may be that uh, if we can generate this data in conjunction with the police, um, that we could then uh, justify a greater number of mobile support cameras, uh, sorry, mobile CCTV cameras. So the, I'm simply asking that we ask our staff to work with the police to gather further information. I'm not suggesting that that information need to be made publicly available. I am, sim and I expect that there will be a significant degree of confidentiality to the point that I don't expect that any of that information that we would ask for from the police would be made available uh, within our public meetings, but that it would remain confidential at all times. I um, summarise uh, by saying that I support uh, CCTV in our community. I believe um, that it has been extremely successful in our community. I know that we want to um, augment uh, the existing facilities uh, in central Albury. We're bringing um, services out to uh, the Lavington area and I can um, I want us to be able to enhance and expand on that um, once that's been put in place. And I'm also very conscious of the fact that we need uh, to be able to work into the future as to where new cameras will go, where we need higher resolution cameras, where we need to be as we are doing it um, at the moment, inserting additional cameras into our CBD area. All of that needs to have information um, so that we can reliably uh, infill the, in the appropriate areas rather than largely guesswork to determine where it is that we need to be able to put the CCTV equipment uh, and indeed where we need to put the better uh, quality or the better vision um, and higher resolution uh, equipment. Uh, so Mr Mayor, I 
trust that, um, and I, I, again, I apologise that I haven't quite got that wording right, uh, but make it perfectly clear that I'm really asking our staff to work with New South Wales Police to better provide information that will enable us to have an even more effective CCTV uh, facility within our community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Glucken. Happy to put the amendment. Uh, remember, this is the amendment. Those supporting the amendment, those against the amendment, the amendment is carried, so the amendment becomes part of the motion. Councillor Glucken, do you wish to speak any further to the motion? There appears to be no other further questions or debate, so I'm happy to put the motion. Those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Okay, 13.5, councillor payment of expense and provision facilities program policy. Councillor Stutchbury. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I wish to move that this matter be deferred to the next meeting. Thank you. You wish the matter to be deferred to the next meeting. Any second of Councillor King? Second that. Councillor Stutchbury, uh, yes, did you wish to speak to that? Sure, I'll be brief. Look, this um, is a, an important matter. Uh, we're two councillors down tonight. I think this is a matter that should be discussed with all councillors present. And uh, from my own personal point of view, and I'm not um, debating the original motion, but uh, there are some issues there that need to be uh, fleshed out uh, with all of us present. And I would uh, think that it's not a matter of urgency and could easily be deferred for two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vanderman has a question. Uh, yeah, look, um, I'm, I'm just interested in what the controversial parts of this particular motion are uh, to have it deferred for, we've, we've done plenty of, um, uh, of um, uh, issues in terms of um, decisions that we've made with, uh, I think as few as six councillors present at one stage. So I don't understand. Uh, this is just a, um, a, a normal policy review with a few word changes. That's it. I, I just don't understand what the what the issue is. Yeah, it's a start, but do you wish to re respond to that? I think the question is, what is the point of the deferral? Am I responding to a question or am I arguing? Uh, no, for the, the question is, what is the basis of your deferral? Statement. Yep. Okay, so, so you're speaking, speaking against, against okay. All right, who's spoken against? I need a speaker for Councillor King. Yes, I'm supporting um, the deferral as um, Councillor Vanderman has pointed out. There's been a lot of decisions made with only six councillors, but I can't recall one that relates to um, specifically to councillors um, uh, on this matter. So uh, I think with two councillors down, they have a right to be heard. They have a right to uh, put their arguments forward and I'm supporting this. Thank you. Speaking for, speaking against, Councillor Glycken. I have a question, sorry, Councillor Doxy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I direct this question to Councillor Stutsbury. If there's two councillors away tonight in a fortnight's time is one away, will the meeting go ahead in this motion or it will be deferred again until we get all nine councillors. Well, I th <laughs> Councillor me. I think it's pretty oh, well, much... Councillor, Councillor Doxy, I'm very happy to answer your question. I think that this matter should be dis discussed by all nine councillors and it's not a matter of urgency. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Glacken speaking against. Uh, thank you. Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I speak against this uh, motion. Uh, I see no reason why we should be deferring this. There may very well be, in fact, there are uh, two councillors not here this evening, um, but there are a number of us here in the, in the chamber and one uh, who has Zoomed in. Uh, if we are to defer this matter, then perhaps we should have deferred all matters uh, being presented to council this evening, um, because in essence, there are the same two councillors not available here this evening for whatever reasons, and we've accepted uh, their apology and, and we've granted them leave of absence uh, for this meeting. Uh, there is no reason why we should be, I believe, deferring this matter uh, when we are happy to deal with other and all other matters that have come before council this evening. So I cannot support the deferral of this this evening. 
Thank you. Thank you. I have a speaker against, but uh, no speakers for Councillor Thurley. Question. Uh, the question is probably directed to Mr. Zaknich. Uh, is there any uh, legal or um, legislative requirement from OLG that we need to deal with this matter tonight? Is there a time limit on when we have to adopt this policy? Mr. Zaknich. Thanks for the question through you, Mr. Mayor. No, no there isn't. Um, we've taken the opportunity based on councillor feedback to review the policy and um, obviously the policy will then again need to be reviewed um, when the new council is in place post-September. But um, the process was to consider the, the revised draft this evening and place it out for community comment and then it will, uh, of course, come back to council if there are uh, submissions or uh, council requests it to come back for consideration. Thank you. Councillor Clacken, question? Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, Mr Mayor, through you to the most relevant member of staff. My memory is that uh, we had a presentation on this uh, to the councillors at the end of last year. Could I just have, um, could you refresh my memory as to uh, what date uh, that was uh, that we uh, reviewed this as a council? Ms Stevens? Mm. And I'm happy to take that as a, a month, mm. whether it was November or October or December. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, I don't have the approximate date um, at, at the forefront of my mind, but it would have been in the, the latter part of the year. So we would have been talking probably around September period. Okay. All right. If anyone else remembers, but I think it was mm. probably October, but yeah. Thank yeah, you. September, October. Yeah. No yeah. later than that, though. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question from Councillor Vanderman. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I have two questions through you um, to staff. Can I ask the staff how many of tonight's um, issues were urgent? That's the first question. And second question is we're actually um, making uh, a recommendation or moving a motion that we endorse the draft and it goes on public exhibition. So if the councillors uh, that aren't present wish to make some submissions, I think there's probably plenty of opportunities to make those submissions uh, when, it, uh, when it comes back, uh, uh, if there are other submissions, when it comes back uh, for uh, a final uh, council approval. So they've got a chance to speak then. And, and I'm also curious, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, as to why Councillor Sutchbury thinks that this is such a funny issue. Thank you. Mr Zaknich, did you wish to respond to those questions? Thanks. Except for the last one. Probably not the last one. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Except for the last one. Um, yes, so the draft, uh, revised draft based on councillor feedback to date um, was proposed to be um, uh, placed on uh, public community exhibition for that period of time and then back to council with any submissions received. Uh, and even if no submissions are received, we can certainly bring the uh, bring the policy back to council for further consideration when council can make further changes if it so so wishes. Uh, in terms of the urgency of the agenda, this is our first scheduled uh, council meeting for February. Council allocates two meetings per month, and we've taken the opportunity to obviously present the items that uh, required attention this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zakic. And as to the last question, I'm happy to accept that observation, Councillor Vanderman. I don't know that I think Councillor Councillor uh, Sutby doesn't need to answer that question. Um, in relation to the the question, when it was presented, the workshop was 19th of October. October. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No other speakers for, but I have a speaker against Councillor Doxy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tonight we've dealt with a development application valued at several million dollars. We've also allocated the funding for $440,000 for the Albury Swim Centre for a new pump. Surely these were important enough to go ahead with two councillors not here tonight. I rest my case. I vote against this motion. Thank you. Are there no further speakers for or against? I'm happy to Councillor Sutch to sum up. Thanks. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would love to sum up um, and I uh, elected not to point of order Councillor Van Der Ven for his ludicrous comment. Uh, this is in fact a serious matter and I'm taking it seriously and I'm not sure um, 
why Councillor Van Aven thinks that I think this is funny. One of the councillors who is uh, an apology for tonight is at work and he's out of the area and he has no reasonable internet access at present and he has been unable to access his emails or indeed the agenda for this meeting and he asked me if I would mind having this matter deferred until he can get back and uh, contribute to the debate. I am looking at a four and a half year old iPad whose screen is cracked and it's held onto the um, thing by sticky tape and it's absolutely covered in ludicrous greens and union member stickers that I can't remove. And I've got an iPhone, which I don't use because it's four and a half years old. No, I have all of my council phone calls uh, moved to my own phone. We're meant to be some sort of board of management here. We're meant to make decisions um, for this city, for its residents and ratepayers. And I feel like uh, we're undervalued and uh, have um, uh, insufficient um, infrastructure to do our job. I, in fact, think we need a, a hell of a lot more than a really old, out-of-date iPad and an iPhone that's well and truly out of date. And I think that we need more than what we're getting from uh, council. And some of my uh, fellow councillors agree and some of them can't be here to either argue their point or make their vote tonight in person because they're at work. And, you know, there's a, another issue which is probably irrelevant to this debate, but um, it seems to me that a lot of what goes on here in this council, a lot of meetings um, occur during work hours, during the working week, where councillors who have a job and need to attend to it can't get to. So I, I don't know. I just think that we, seven councillors present tonight and nine councillors all together, ought to be asking from the staff and from council in general for a bit more. We need a bit more than an old out of whack iPad and an old iPhone and no research support. Whenever a whenever a, a matter is brought before us for consideration and voting, I have no ability to research the matter other than to do it in my own time on 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 Google. I don't have a, a research assistant amongst the staff to call upon. So I just don't think that we're getting enough from um the uh, council staff to allow us to do our job properly. So I think that this matter should be deferred for two whole weeks until all of us who are impacted by this issue can um, consider it, uh, debate it and vote upon it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, happy to put that motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is lost. Well done, guys. We'll, uh, <laughs> we've dealt with that motion, so the matter can't be deferred to the next council meeting. Now, now we default to the original motion. Is that correct? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Zaknich? Need a mover and second. Yes. Councillor Glacken? Mr Mayor, through you to move the recommendation as a motion that council endorses the draft revised councillors payment of expenses and provision of facilities policy, places the policy on public exhibition for 28 days and in the event uh, no submissions are received, adopts the revised councillors uh, payment of expenses and provision of facilities policy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Doxey. Happy to second, Mr Mayor, and I've got a question. Thank you. No worries. Can you take the question, Councillor Biden? Councillor Doxy, question. I must say I am surprised that. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Is there a question or a statement? Uh, Councillor Doxy, you're asking a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It Thank will be you. A question. Yes. My question is to the CEO. Yes. I am surprised that. I am also aware that other councillors have damaged their equipment and it has been replaced. This must be an ongoing thing. I've had my iPad now for four and a half years. I've had my, my phone for four and a half years and they haven't been damaged. 
if they would be damaged, I'm sure that the council staff would replace it. Would that be right, Mr. CEO? Mr. Zaknich. Yes, thanks for the question through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, that's the case. Um, as long as we're made aware of the uh, the issues that, or the condition and or any damage or repairs that are required. Thank you, Councillor Doxy. Councillor Glaken, you're just open debate. Uh, very uh, briefly, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I think it's important that we deal with this tonight. It's going out <coughs> public uh, exhibition. Uh, so therefore it's not um, being ratified tonight. It's, it's being sent out for public uh, exhibition. Um, and I'm very happy to um, confirm that I, uh, my cover uh, broke on my iPad and I asked the staff if I could be issued with another cover for my iPad and I was duly uh, issued with another cover for my iPad. Um, and so if uh, staff um, can be um, so readily able to provide me with uh, a replacement cover, I have no doubt that they would be able to do so uh, for other councillors. And so I believe that the process um, that demonstrates that the process is clearly working um, and therefore I'm happy to support that uh, this policy go out for public exhibition uh, and look forward to um, that exhibition period uh, for people to be able to make comment. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Uh, the Speaker, again, just to caution you, Councillor Stutchby, could you maintain your vitriol to the issues at hand, not towards individuals? Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, uh, in response to the broken iPad, uh, clearly that's a, a minor uh, facet of the whole issue. The whole issue is really councillor support to try and do their jobs correctly. Even if Councillor Cameron had a brand spanking new iPad and fantastic brand new cover where he was right now, he can't do his job because he just can't access anything from council. And I think that's the point I'm making that we need overall a bit more than what this uh, policy is um, suggesting that uh, we receive. And I'm not talking about financial matters here. I'm talking about you know, infrastructure and just necessary items. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thurley speaking for the motion. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the matter will go out on public display. Um, people will make submissions. If they don't, council councillors can make a submission themselves. <laughs> The matter then comes back to council for determination. Um, I, I just, um, honestly, if we think the public's watching this live stream tonight, I'd be shocked. What the hell do they think we do in here if they are watching this debate? It's appalling. This is, we have a policy for um, provision of, payment of expense for provision of facilities. Councillor Cameron seems to have some issue. I don't know what that is. I must say I've travelled far and wide in this uh, country and rarely have I found that I couldn't get access to council stuff. The only time I can't is when I've neglected to change my password and it has expired. Um, and that has happened to me once or twice, but the great service of our IT guys has very quickly got me back on track. This can, this can be decided tonight and we get another crack at it after a public exhibition of 28 days. Um, I can't see any problem with that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor King speaking against by looks of it with his... Yeah, supporting uh, Councillor Thurley's... Uh, sorry, Councillor Stutchbury's um, view on the, on, the, um, on the matter... I, too, feel very undervalued by the whole organisation. And it's not just an iPad. It's not just a phone. It's probably more the, more the issue of the resources available for research. It's to do your job. We, uh, some of us here are full-time workers that need that backup, that need that support. We are a member of a board, a big board, that has multi-million dollar bank balances and deal with tens of thousands of people, and uh, it's a bigger picture. And when you have Councillor Cameron, who's asking it to be deferred, and myself, and Councillor Stutchbury, that's one third. That's one third of the people in that room or on Zoom who are dissatisfied with the um, provisions for councillor services. So it's not an iPad, it's not replacing a cover, something as trivial as that. It's the big picture. And I, um, I'm voting against it and, 
and concur 100% with what uh, Councillor Stuthbury said about this matter. Thank you. Uh, there's another speaker for, but a question from Councillor Doxey. Question, Councillor Doxey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I direct my question to the CEO. Recently, we have, uh, the council have had, uh, submitted a uh, return in their satisfaction or otherwise with, uh, with Albury City provi uh, provisions. I understand on one occasion, only six of the nine councils even bothered to put in a return. Uh, these get looked at, I am sure. And uh, I, I just, I agree with Councillor Thurley. I'm just uh, over the debate tonight. It's ridiculous. Thank you. What was the question? There's no question. I move that the motion be sorted. Excuse me, stand by. Just let Councillor Doxy ask the question and make a statement. Mr. Zaknitz, can you answer the first part of the question about the satisfaction survey? Was it in fact done and were there six, six responses? Thanks for the question through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, we do an annual councillor support satisfaction survey. Uh, as many councillors as uh, are able to respond, respond. It's not mandatory. We do encourage participation though and feedback regularly. And on that basis, this last um, support survey, uh, that was the basis on which the, uh, the workshop discussion was held uh, back in October last year. Thank you. That's the question answered. Councillor Vanderen, dealing with your motion, the motion be put. Have I got a seconder for that? Thanks. Councillor Thurley, actually, happy to put the motion. All those in favour of having the motion put? Okay. Now I'm put the motion. I'm putting the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Okay, 13.6, New South Wales Local Government Rating Reform Submission. Thank you, Councillor Vanderman. I'm happy to move uh, motion, uh, the recommendation of the motion. The council endorses Albury City's response to New South Wales Government's exposure draft of the Local Government Amendment Rates Bill 2021. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. I second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Vanderman. Do you wish to speak to that? Uh, only briefly, it's, um, it's, uh, rates have been a, a thorn in the side of uh, councils for a long time. There's a lot of suggestions come out of this council. I think that the, the report that we're providing now encompasses most of the uh, thoughts and suggestions that have come out of this council over the last 15 to 20 years. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Thurley, you wish to speak for the motion also? I do, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> simply to note that this is... Um, I've been on council since 2012. I think this started soon after I got on council. 2013, this review was, a review panel was recommended. Uh, the Premier of New South Wales in 2015 was Mr Baird, and he provided <laughs> terms of reference to IPAR. Uh, a draft report in 2016. And finally, in 2019, we got further public consultation on 28 of 42 recommendations. Finally, we've got an exposure draft and we've made a submission. I wonder, will it be determined before the end of my, this current term on council? I hope it will be. Uh, and I commend the staff on the quality of the submission we've put. Um, I'd just like to see some action on it from the state government. Thank you, Councillor Thurley, speaking for. Another speaker for, no speakers against. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, through you, and thank you for the indulgence. Um, I wish to highlight that the report indicates uh, very clearly that the very vast majority of uh, the work um, being undertaken, all the recommendations uh, being proposed by the um, state government, uh, have actually been supported by our staff um, and highlights the fact that, as Councillor Vanderbend has already raised, uh, a significant number of those areas are aspects that we as a council have been uh, feeding back into the state government over a number of years. So I wanted to make that clear, uh, that the report shows uh, very clearly uh, that we as a council support the majority of the recommendations that they are putting forward in their uh, amendment bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any other speakers for or questions or speakers against? Doesn't appear to be. I do note, just as a note, um, that uh, we did uh, make, or I think Councillor Thurley raised it early days, back in the good old days about exemptions. 
and I said there's exemptions for uh, conservation purposes, but not for religious or, or other purposes, which is unfortunate. I think that didn't write a mention. So thanks for that. Okay, happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Also reports for noting investment balances December 2020. Councillor Vanderen. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'll move the uh, recommendation and motion the Council receives and notes the investment balances report for the month of December 2020. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Vander, would you speak to that? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. No further question or debate. Have put the motion. All those in favour? And against, the motion is carried. Same 14.2, monthly development statistics, November 2020. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council receives and notes that the information in the monthly development stats report for November 2020. Thank you. Councillor Glycken. I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, you to speak to that? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. There are no further questions or debate. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Motion is carried. Thank you. We're up to 14.3 councillors' conference attendance for 1 July 2020 to 31 December 2020. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. To move the recommendations, the motion that council receives and notes the report on councillor attendance at uh, conferences for the period 1 July 2020 uh, to 31 December 2020. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Any questions or debate? Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, Councillor Glenn, just speak to that, sorry. Uh, yes, to uh, just say very briefly, uh, there was uh, attendance by a number of councillors um, uh, in the last in this last reporting period, uh, noting the Murray-Darling Association and also the local government uh, New South Wales annual conference, which was held online. Um, and even though there are um, there's at least one councillor on that list that is not here tonight, I'm sure um, that that councillor would be happy for us to be dealing with this report this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Uh, no notices of urgent business. No de delegates reports for noting. Have a confidential matter. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry. We'll deal with the urgent business. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. On your behalf, attended the opening of the Radman Cup, um, which was a, a cricket competition and the uh, Country Cricket New South Wales presented this small token to Orby City in recognition of our support. So. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. It's a lovely, lovely presentation. And I did mention to you before that the seeds, seeds were certainly sowed by myself and previous Mayor of Wodonga, Councillor Speedy, about the, uh, the new facility in Wodonga, the uh, Orby Wodonga Cricket uh, Facility. So yeah, a lot of good things come out of that uh, particular cup. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Confidential item, thank uh, you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to move um, that we, where are we, that we move into confidential uh, uh, to discuss items, uh, council meeting number 17.1, uh, as this is confidential item exclusive press and public on the grounds that the matter relates to um, one um, information on either, or the following. Uh, a, information that would be disclosed, confer a commercial advantage on a person uh, with whom the council is conducting or proposes to conduct business. And uh, B, uh, commercial information of a confidential nature that would, if disclosed, um, uh, little dotty I, uh, prejudice the commercial position of the person who supplied it. Uh, this is with reference to Local Government Act 1993, Section 30, um, 10 A, uh, brackets two, brackets C, and brackets D, brackets I. Thank you. Okay, second of thanks. Councillor Doxey. Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Just to ask if anyone in the in the chamber has any reason why we shouldn't proceed in a confidential, given there is no public in the chamber. I'm happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Okay. Uh, thank you. Someone.